Ben, on your screen is a live picture from Capitol Hill. This is the Rayburn House office building. We are live for the House Government Reform Committee's hearing on political fundraising. Testifying today, former Commerce Department employee John Wong. This is his second day testifying, and a third day has been scheduled for the hearings tomorrow. This is chaired by Congressman Dan Burton, scheduled to begin at 10 o'clock, and as you can see, running a little bit wait, late rather, you can see the ranking member on your screen, and that's Henry Waxman. As soon as Dan Burton comes in and gavels this underway, we'll have our live coverage. Today's hearing is expected to last until 5 p.m. During any breaks in the hearing, we'll open our phone lines, take your calls and comments on what you've seen. Good morning. A quorum being present. The Committee on Government Reform will come to order. Mr. Wong, I want to remind you, as welcome you back and your counsel, I want to remind you that the that you're still under oath, and we will resume uh, questioning of Mr. Wong in five-minute rounds by members of the committee. Let me start off by saying that uh, we originally planned to start out this morning by questioning a witness from the Justice Department. The reason was that they had not complied with our subpoena. Yesterday, they complied with our subpoena, so I excused the witness. However, I'd like to tell you what we discovered from the Justice Department and, I can, and the reason why they didn't want to agree to our subpoena. And uh, it's very troubling, and I want to take time to talk about it. We asked the Justice Department to provide us with copies of the FBI's interview summaries. Over the years, they've routinely given them to congressional committees. We asked for John Wong summaries. They gave them to us. We asked for Charlie Tree summaries. They gave them to us. They sent us the Johnny Chung summaries, and we didn't, didn't even ask for those. Then we asked them to send us the interview summaries of the president and the vice president. The Justice Department was required to produce them under our subpoena. That's when the trouble started. We were met with excuse after excuse, delay after delay. Suddenly, they came up with a new policy. They weren't going to give FBI interview summaries, the 302s, to Congress anymore. They said we would have to come to the department and read them, but we couldn't have copies. So I sent my staff over to read the interviews. It became very clear why they didn't want us to have those 302s. They interviewed the president twice, once in 1997 and once in 1998. 
and I hope you'll understand this, this is very important. They never asked the president one single question about John Wong. They never asked the president one single question about Charlie Tree. How can that be? What kind of an investigation is this? There aren't many people in this town who've been tougher critics of General Reno, Janet Reno than I have, but I'm even stunned by this. It doesn't stop there. They interviewed Vice President Gore three times. They didn't ask him a single question about the Shi Lai Temple fundraiser. They didn't ask him a single question about John Wong or Maria Shaw. What's going on here? How could they not ask the president and the vice president about John Wong or James Riotti? Did they forget? Did they think it wasn't important? Did someone tell them not to? I'm so disillusioned I can't have the words to describe my feelings. We asked the Attorney General time and time again to appoint an independent counsel, but she said, no, I'm the Attorney General, you can trust me. I'll conduct a thorough and vigorous investigation. I'm going to read you what the Attorney General said when she testified before our committee in 1997. Quote, in this particular campaign finance investigation, as in all others entrusted to the Department of Justice, we are going to follow every lead wherever it goes, end quote. Well, it's pretty obvious that she has not done that. We've seen the evidence over and over. Documents were being destroyed at Charlie Tree's house. The FBI was watching his house. They asked for a search warrant. They couldn't get a search warrant because Janet Reno said they did not have enough probable cause. Liu Chao Ying of China Aerospace wired Johnny Chung $300,000. The Justice Department never even bothered to check her bank records. Johnny Chung was being harassed and threatened. The, 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 the FBI even put him in protective custody while he was testifying. They have it all on tape by the man who was doing the threatening, and he was never even indicted. Charles in Triago was caught red-handed making illegal contributions to the DNC. The case was gift-wrapped for them, and the Justice Department let the statute of limitations expire. It's pretty obvious to me that she's blocking for her boss, the president. We've said that over and over. I've written a letter to the attorney general. I've asked her to explain why this happened. And uh, I have said in the letter that if she does not give us a satisfa satisfactory answer, we will subpoena her and have her answer the questions before the American people in this committee room. I've written a letter to the attorney general, as I've said, and I ask unanimous consent to include my letter in the record at the conclusion of my remarks. I also intend to ask unanimous consent to release copies of all the president's FBI 302s and the vice president's 302s. The FBI has told us that personal information has been redacted, has been crossed out. I think the American people deserve, deserve to see firsthand how this investigation is being conducted, how the attorney general is being so partisan. This is a travesty. I don't know how the American people can have any confidence in their government when they find these facts out. When important people, like the President and Vice President, are given a free ride when the Justice Department questions them. They don't even ask questions about very important figures connected to the President. It only reinforces my determination that this committee, this committee be as thorough as possible. With that, uh, Mr. Waxman, you want to take your five minutes? Yesterday, I pointed out how this committee has settled into a very familiar pattern. Very uh, uh, strong accusations are made, and then when the facts come in, uh, don't corroborate those accusations. Rather than acknowledge uh, the, the, the situation, the chairman has come back, has come back consistently with, with more inflammatory uh, remarks uh, describing how people are not giving him what he wants. It's, it's I assume my time is not up, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, uh, yesterday, we spent the whole day with Mr. Wong. Uh, nothing came out of that testimony uh, to in any way come close to substantiate the uh, inflammatory charges that have been made by Chairman Burton and other Republican leaders over the past year. So what we're seeing is that phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four uh, scenario that I described yesterday being played out. If you don't have the facts to back up your accusations, you quickly move on to another inflammatory accusation and hope that people won't pay attention to the fact, uh, the fact that uh, what you said earlier uh, doesn't hold up. 
And then the uh, other point I would make is uh, the chairman is challenging the integrity of the FBI. These were interviews conducted by FBI agents, and it's a, a huge leap to uh, uh, attack uh, Janet Reno, the uh, attorney general, for interviews by the FBI. So uh, I, I, I don't know what other else to say about the whole matter, except uh, uh, it's clear that, uh, again, the chairman's frustrated by not finding information that he'd like to have, not finding the smoking gun he believes should be there to substantiate all the accusations that he has already made that uh, haven't uh, held up in light of uh, facts that have come out over these last three, ye three years, and particularly yesterday with a very long day of grilling Mr. Wong, who was supposed to be the crucial witness that would show how uh, these, uh, uh, there was a conspiracy to tie in contributions from China to influence the presidential elections in exchange for selling out the national security of this nation. Yield back the balance of my time. Let's go on to the questions of well, Mr. Would the, Wong. Would the gentleman yield? Yes. Uh, let me say that uh, I uh, am going to ask uh, unanimous consent that the 302s, which I believe will speak for themselves, uh, be uh, put in the record and uh, released. Uh, and we do not have a quorum here, so unless the gentleman is prepared to object to the release of these 302s, uh, I will ask unanimous Re consent. Reserving the right to object, uh, I'm not going to object to anything going into the record, except I asked yesterday that the 302s about uh, Congressman Solomon be given to this committee, and I'll only agree to your unanimous consent if we expanded to put his 302 records, his 302 statements in the record as well. I, I, I think I said yesterday I have no problem with that, number one. And number two, Charlie Tree, you also asked that Charlie Tree's information be put in the record. And I said once the FBI has gone through the redaction process, which I think they're entitled to, uh, we have no problem with that. So with that, I will agree. To be clear then, the unanimous consent is to put into the record all of the 302s, including Congressman Solomon's 302s, Mr. Tree's, and uh, the other 302s relating to Mr. Wolf. With, with the proviso that the FBI has the uh, right to redact the... And, and furthermore, reserving the right to object, has the FBI made redactions in these 302s so that we're not... Uh, and any any, any reference to any personal issues regarding the president has been redacted by the Justice or by the FBI, right? So these 302s have redactions that the FBI has put into place? That, that other than Charlie Tree. Charlie Trees have not been redacted, but they're going to be. Well, in other words, you will put them in the record after the redactions. That's correct. I, I withdraw my uh, reservation. Without objection, the 302s will be put in the record and released. Uh, Mr. Shays. Mr. Chairman, before my time, if we could just clarify the process. My understanding is that we have around uh, five minutes. Uh, I'd like to ask unanimous consent that members be given uh, ten minutes uh, uh, rather than five, and I would make that request. Without objection, I, I think since we have so few members here, that might be easier. Reserving the right to object, uh, Mr. Wag Mr. Waxman. Uh, I don't have extensive questioning because I've asked Mr. Wong most of what I thought was pertinent to the investigation yesterday. But the rules do provide five-minute rounds, and uh, I, I think we ought to stick with the rules and not change the rules. If uh, if, the, if, the the gentleman, if the gentleman uh, from Connecticut hey. is in the middle of some line of questioning at the end of five minutes, it's, it's I wouldn't have objection at that point. But I would want to. I don't want to concede that uh, on the Republican side each member gets ten minutes, and, and then on the Democratic side, where I'm all alone at this point, uh, yeah. we, we only get. Uh, we have to wait. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 minutes before we get a chance to correct the record. So uh, the rules provide five-minute rounds, and uh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay with that. But I'll, I will be liberal in, in giving people additional time uh, I, when, when appropriate. Thank you. Um, my understanding is, as well, Mr. Chairman, that we will have a set of rounds, and if someone passes and they don't take their uh, time during that round, we start the next round. They can't accumulate passes. Yes. The, the the five minutes is not a cumulative thing. If you don't use your five minutes during that round, then you have five minutes in the next round. And what I would suggest uh, to the members, since we're going to have a limited number here, if uh, one member wants to yield to another, uh, we'll try to uh, give you ten minutes if it's necessary for you to have a continuation and the constancy of your questions. I'm, I'm prepared to yield to other members under okay. that basis. Mr. Shea. Thank you. Um, good morning. Morning, Mr. Morning, Mr. Shea. 
Mr. Wong, it's nice right. to have you here. Thank you very much, sir. Um, and uh, I, I do think I want to say, to start with, that um, uh, you both, uh, your attorney and you, need to be careful when you uh, are talking with each other. And I want to say from the outset that I don't mind waiting since I know that we have unlimited rounds. So you shouldn't feel rushed. We want the accurate question. Since your attorney really isn't uh, welcome to speak, uh, we want to make sure that you clearly understand the terms we're using. So you should never be hesitant to ask him questions. And I also would suggest that you literally turn the mic away from you because it's a very sensitive mic that picks up conversations, and we don't want to pick up those conversations. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Um, Mr. Wong, I had asked you yesterday, and I'm just going to summarize, even if I use my five minutes now for the summary, uh, and I want to just verify, and then during the course of the day I won't have to keep coming back to it, but uh, you started working for the Lippo uh, Bank entities from 1985 until July of 1994, and your answer was yes to that. Lippo Group, though, Group Lippo Entities. Group. Okay. entities yes. And that from July 94 to December 95, um, you worked at the Commerce Department, and we'll get into what you did at the Commerce Department today. Yes. And that from December 95 to October, November 96, you worked at the DNC, and your, your responsibilities by primarily or almost solely were to raise money. Is that correct? That is correct, sir. Mm -hmm. um, it's my understanding that you uh, pleaded guilty mm -hmm. uh, to um, uh, conspiracy, to defraud. Uh, you acknowledge raised in approximately 150,000 illegally. Uh, you were the conduit for uh, contributions. You were aware of other people making contributions that wasn't really their money. Is that correct? That is correct, sir. Um, while you acknowledged 150,000 of illegal activity, you also made the Justice Department aware that, that uh, potentially another $800,000 of, of laundered money uh, was contributed uh, to whom uh, and from whom? Uh, essentially to Democratic Party or various candidates, uh, or senatorial candidates or congressional candidates, I believe. So some went to the DNC, some might have gone to state parties, um, some might have gone to candidates, a variety of candidates, primarily on the Democrat side of the aisle. Exclusively? Primarily in, in the Democratic side, yes. Now, um, uh, those illegal activities took place in 92, as well as 93 and 94, or were they limited just to 92? Uh, 92, 93, and 94. Okay, and they stopped in 94? Stopped in 94, I believe. They, they ended in 94? all those illegal activities that you made reference to, to the Justice Department that you were aware of? Excuse me one second. Sure. Turn the mic away, please. I wish you sorry for the for the interruption. No, please, uh, no apologies during the course okay. of this time. Uh, there's one more case I'm aware of in 1995, but I have no no knowledge. It, uh, did not really verify it. It could be on that basis. So you're saying one? And how much did the 1995 case? How much money are we talking about in 1995? Probably uh, twelve thousand. Okay. Now. Um, it's my understanding uh, that uh, I'd like to just have you... But however, the, yeah. all the illegal, so-called illegal activities basically stop at, uh, you know, 1994. 
Okay. Now, the 800000 that you make reference to, um, was that money that ultimately, it's your understanding, um, uh, the Riottis, uh covered? In other words, they, it was their employees, and they basically covered this money? They, they were the contributors ultimately? It was their money? Yeah, through LIPOs, yeah. Through their? LIPO, LIPO entities. Th through their LIPO entities, uh, and their entities being ultimately employees who worked for the LIPO entities? That's correct, yes. Um, does that also include uh, the money um, from business partners of Mr. Riotti, the father, James's father, uh, Hashim Ning? Does it include uh, the money that he in contributed, or is that... That's an addition? No, that's not included. That I, I, I don't know any knowledge. I don't have any knowledge on that part, sir. You haven't even read anything? You have no knowledge or you have some knowledge? No, I don't have any knowledge to say. So whether the money was coming in to, to Hashin Ning on that. So you had no involvement with Hashin Ning in any uh, contributions he might have made uh, in the late 80s, 90s, or any of the 90s? I had no knowledge on that, sir. Um, in addition to uh, the 150,000 and the 800,000, uh, there was also uh, sums of money that you raised while you were at the DNC. Uh, my time has expired. I Right. Neither of you opening uh, five minutes. Uh, we both used our opening five minutes. So, so uh, I just, I just appreciate the magnanimous uh, um, effort, no, but I you really have no time in this round to yield to me. Comments. That was no. opening, those were opening comments. Well, Mr. But Chairman, I ask unanimous consent the gentleman from Connecticut be given an additional five minutes. Without objection. Okay. Um, I thank the gentleman for doing that. Um, I'd like you to, to um, start to explain to me um, uh, how you raised money for the DNC. Um, and if you were raising money for the RNC, I'd be asking you the same questions. Uh, how much money did you raise for the DNC? I really don't have exactly figure, approximately anywhere from three to five million dollars, I think. Three to five million? When I was there. Okay. That's a pretty broad range. I would think intuitively no. that if you were raising this money, you wouldn't know every penny because, frankly, it's to your credit. If you raised money, if you thought you raised it legally, it's to your credit. The reason I have the broad range is I try to include in all the Asian communities, whoever gave money, I lump everything together, maybe or maybe not be through my, my efforts. Well, I want to know what you raised through your efforts. I would sum anywhere between two and five, two point five to three million dollars, sir. Okay. Well, we we have uh, basically a sense that you raised three point four million dollars that we know of, and we and our sense is that one point six that you raised four hundred twenty-four contributions, um, and that eighty-eight were basically returned for a total of one thousand. One million six hundred twenty-three thousand three hundred fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. Now that money was returned for a variety of reasons, but the bottom line was the judgment was if it was accepted, it would have been illegal, and therefore it needed to be returned. Um, I need to know how you raised your money. Essentially, I raised money through the contact of the people I know, or somebody would refer me. Some people might be uh, of. Uh, you know, interest in making contribution through the network, that, through the contacts, which I, or all the friends when I made uh, over a period of time, what is it, in New York or San Francisco or Los Angeles primarily. And we 
when you raised money, um, you understood there were certain legal requirements. What are the legal requirements that you understood to be true? The number one is the, the party has to have at least as a, a permanent resident status or green card holder, uh, American citizens. Uh, that's for individual contributions. Right. Now, in the event that's uh, it's beyond that amount, beyond the, uh, the hard, hard money basis, then the, the money can come from a corporation and become a soft money. And the individual can, can also give unlimited amount of money, uh, which can be categorized as a soft money, sir. So if it's hard money, there are certain limits to what they can contribute, correct? That is correct. And if soft money, there's no limits? There's no limit, okay. yes. Um, you need to know other things, what? You need to know their occupation, correct? Mm, there's a, the record sheets uh, you had to fill it out Right. Uh, you know the the party's name and the addresses, need to know who phone number, then phone number, the contact numbers. Who they're employed by? If we have that information, yeah, yes. That, that's required, isn't it? Uh, I'm not sure. I, I strictly, uh, you know, adhere to that rules. Well, I want to know if you knew it. I'm not sure I did that. So. I, I, I don't want to split hairs here, and I'm not trying to trick you. I know you're not. Uh, okay. I, I, no, don't assume that during the course of the day I won't, but I'm not trying to now. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I just want to know what you knew you were supposed to do, and it seems to be a fairly simple question. You were employed by the DNC. They're not going to be stupid and enough to not tell you what the rules are, so you were told the rules. You were a fundraiser. You need to know the rules. That's kind of basic. I want you to explain to me what the rules are. I just went to very practical matters. If it's an individual contribution, I did not really feel out where the employment is. I did not even the fact ask that for you them. you didn't do it right. doesn't make it right. It also doesn't mean that you didn't know you shouldn't have done it. The fact that you didn't do it isn't, uh, uh, you know, the worst crime in the world, but, but you're supposed to do it. And you knew that, isn't that correct? I'm supposed to fill out as much information as possible uh, about the individual. Right. No, the, the bottom line is, it's required information, isn't it? I mean, it, and, there's, and you knew that. You knew, I, I, I'm not gonna let off this point until I get a definitive answer here. Okay. It's true that you knew that, that this information is required in order to be legal. Isn't that true? That's true. Okay. And, and so we want to know if they're a U.S. citizen. We want to know if they're not a U.S. citizen, if they have a green card, they, they have the right to work here. Because if they're not here legally, if they're here illegally or they're overseas, they don't have a right to contribute. And it's not an ethnic thing and it's not a discrimination thing. It's the law. You got to be a U.S. citizen. Mr. Shays, uh, this is not the, the understanding I have. Even at this point, the only understanding I have is a person can work in, in overseas, but has a green card status, has the American citizen status, the person can still make contributions. Right. If they have U.S. status, if they have a green card, uh, but if they don't, if they don't have working status in the United States, they can't contribute. That's if correct. They're not a U.S. citizen. Right. Uh, I'd like to clarify one thing, if the gentleman would yield to me. Happy to yield. If, if they are have a green card, but they are living overseas, even if they have a green card, I believe the statute is very clear that they can't make contributions. They can only make contributions if they have a green card if they're working and residing in the United States. Thank you. Um, so you need a U.S., you need to be a citizen, you need to have a green card, you need to be in the United States. My time has elapsed. It's Mr. Sauter's time. Mr. Sauter. I thank the gentleman for yielding. Mr. Sauter. Chairman, before Mr. Sauter uh, uh, proceeds, just a housekeeping matter that I want to raise with you. Yesterday, you agreed uh, to request from the Justice Department the 302s regarding Mr. Solomon's testimony. This morning, we had a unanimous consent agreement that that would be in the record. 
I understand from the Justice Department that they say that your staff hasn't made the request. I wonder if we could just get that request made. I think they're here right now. You can, you we, can make we, a, a, an oral as request. As you speak, it has been done. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. I yield my five minutes to Mr. Chase. So you have to be a U.S. citizen. You have to have a green card. You have to be living in the United States, being in the United States if you don't. Um, and um, you, if... No, if, excuse me. I think the last sentence might not be correct uh, versus to my understanding. Okay, we'll leave that as your understanding. Right. Um, you, the, the contributions are limited. In other words, they can't give over a certain amount. Why don't you describe to me some of the limits that people have when they contribute? For the federal campaign, for the candidate itself, uh, for the senatorial campaign, individually, there's a, a thousand dollar limit for the general elections, and uh, the primary, and also another thousand dollar for the for the general. So that would be it. Okay. Um, yes, sir. How about it, for the DNC? If it's for the party, the uh, hard money, the the. Federal limit is twenty thousand dollars, and on in aggregate for the total amount, total contribution to all the all the candidates, all the committees, for the hard money is twenty five thousand dollars. If I believe, uh, I believe that's good. That's it. Um, you also need to um, know the mailing address of the individual. You need to know their occupation. You need to know who they're employed by. The reason we want to know by who they're employed by is that. We want to be able, to, at the end, to be able to say that I receive so much from the insurance industry or so much from another organization. It's, it's information that uh, we deem uh, should be in the public domain, and that's what we require. If you don't have that information, uh, then you have gotten this money uh, and not followed the law. And, and I would concur that there are obviously different degrees of not following, the, uh, 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 not getting an employer. Sometimes that happens, and all of us go back and find out who the employer is. But ultimately, if you don't have this, all this required information, you've got to send it back. Do you want to speak to you? Mr. Shea, uh, the way I understood is that to the best of my efforts, I should get those information, all right? And then whatever the forms was required, I filled out, I just pass along. And uh, basically, that was it. You know. But we get to the, the challenge. I mean, Mr. Waxman made a point to me. It's so valid. I mean, there are going to be some times that people contribute to your campaign and they didn't do it legally and they're ultimately um, uh, held liable, but it reflects on our campaigns. And I don't think there's a member who's run for public office that hasn't had a contribution that we find embarrassing or that, in fact, may not have been done properly. And when that's found out, boy, you just do your best to get it taken care of. But in your case, we're not talking about, you know, an occasional mistake. We're talking about 3.4 million that we know you raised, and 1.6 of it had to actually be returned. Mm -hmm. And um, I want you to explain to me why some of that money was returned.
Yes, thank you. Mr. Shea, so yes, sir. I'm quite handicapped in, 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 the, in the detailed list of the returning stuff. I did read occasionally from the papers the amount of total you referred to was returned uh, versus to, to the amount of money I raised. Now, based on that, I can give you the best of my account on these things. Give me your best year account. Okay. Uh, the two individual checks of $12,500. Each? 12000 each, yes. Which I raised in uh, Hey Adams event on Mr. Latore yesterday was mentioned about that event. Uh, I was told at the beginning when I received the check, the party had been approved for the green card. In other words, the party had the green card status. But later on, I found out they just been approved with a number, but actually did not receive the physical green cards. So subsequently, I found out I returned the checks. I was involved in that one. The second one is revolving in Chong An, uh, America, which is a Korean uh, entity. Uh, I was involved in that. That was involving about $250,000. Um, How much was that? Two hundred fifty thousand dollars for the checks. Okay, and and and. Sorry, my time is up. Thank you. Can, is. Mr. Chairman, I ask unanimous consent the gentleman from Connecticut be given five additional minutes. Without objection. Could I complete the, the answer, sir? Sure. sure, please. The reason I was involved in the Chang'an case later on in September of 1996, I virtually asked the question whether the, the company had had a revenue in the United States. The answer was not. To the contrary, uh, from the time when I received a check, the, the, the understanding I had. Um, the, th the th third one will be uh, involving uh, Mr. Gandhi's check. And how much was that for? That's just about 325000 Now, the, that was not my solicitation on that uh, in the first place. I don't know whether that was in that category you're talking about, in the, the $1.6 million or not. Okay, we'll check that out. Okay. And that was illegal because? Why, why was that illegal? The way I understood is that the Again, this knowledge is coming from newspaper account. You know, did not come in from the original knowledge I have, because at the time, uh, my information that was his own money, uh, Mr. Gandhi's own money. All right. Okay. Now, explain to me if it was his own money versus the company's money. Why would that make a difference? No, no, that was an individual check. Uh, you mean it was a hard money contribution? No. You see, individual can give both hard money contribution and also soft money contribution. If the amount was going over. Let me just say something. You know, I'm not a fan of, of newspaper reports in a hearing like this, but what I am interested in is to uh, try to understand why you think something may be illegal or not. That interests me. So I need to understand why you think that may have been illegal. The understanding when I received a check that was his money, but later on the information developed from the news account, the DNC has determined or through their investigation, the money he contributed was not really his money. Thank That's you, why it was returned. Thank you. Now the, the fourth one. Yes, now, sir. Uh, the fourth one uh, probably was related to the, uh, was related to Willy Denada's money, which is around, around 400 and some thousand. Riyadi's money? No, no, no. Will Rio Denada. 
Arif. Denada, Denada, yes. Denada, that one. Okay. Yeah. It's a long name. And how much are we talking about? That's probably 450,000, I believe, okay. altogether. And, and why was that returned? I couldn't find any reason that was returned. The only way I can think of the decision was not made by me. Okay. okay. The but it was money raised by you. That was raised by me, yes. And it was your understanding that this was their per personal money? I have no reason to doubt that, sir. Okay. They had the resources? Yes. yes. This, is an in, uh, um, this is a male? Is no, there's a husband and wife. Okay, the, both of them. So both of them in aggregate 450,000. They had every reason to think they had the resources. They That's correct. U.S. citizens uh, and so on. They met all the requirements? No, they were not citizens. They are permanent residents. They are permanent residents. Right. Now, the, the fifth one probably is related to the Miss Kanchana lot. Pauline Kanchela, yep. that was involving a few hundred thousand dollars. Uh, I don't know if that's in this category or not. And, and, and why do you think that was returned? Uh, again, that was through the news account. Uh, uh, I learned about this matter. Uh, I still, at this moment, did not know a real, really detail of why the, the money was, uh, was returned. Okay, this was money you raised, though. Now, the only the only one that you say you didn't raise was the um, the amount of three twenty five. Uh, That's correct. Uh, who raised that? I believe through Mr. Charlie Tree. Okay, and but Charlie Tree gave it to you. Yo, I, I was handling the, the main fund raises. I okay, handled that. But, but let's be clear. Yes. Charlie Tree didn't work for DNC, correct? No. You did. Yes. So you raised it for the DNC, correct? I mean, I mean, it was given to you. I mean. It, why don't you talk to your counsel? Okay. No, I was responsible for the DNC. Right. But the solicitor was the Charlie Tree. That's what yeah, I'm but saying. It, but you're told that when you ra when the money is raised and it's given to you, you you then assume a responsibility. Clearly, the DNC would have made that clear to you. Your employer would have made that clear to you. Correct? You uh, you're not going to take the position that any time someone else gave you money to someone else, this isn't your money. Are you going to take that position? Or are you going to take accountable for? What I'm you taking accountable for that. So I'm trying to explain to you the source yeah, of that. Fair enough. Bottom line, it was your money you raised through Charlie Tree. That's correct. Fine. Thank you. I, I yield back. Mr. Latre. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good morning, Mr. Wong. We were uh, talking yesterday about this February the 19th fundraiser, and if we can go back to that and sort of okay. keep our, our eyes on the on that ball for just five minutes, I guess. The, uh, uh, we were talking yesterday about the head table, and I think that I asked you uh, how the head table got to be the head table, who got to sit with the President of the United States at that particular function. And uh, from my review of things last night, I didn't get a homework assignment from Mr. Shays like you did and Mr. Waxman did, but I, I did some reading anyway, and it looks like that they were tables of 12. Does that sound about right to you? That is correct, sir. Okay, and, and let me just run through who I think was at that head table, and you okay. can tell me whether I'm... I'm right or not. Uh, Nina Wang, uh, Ted Siong, uh, uh, Kwai Fai Li, uh, Pauline Kenchanlak, Richard Park, Sant Shatwal, uh, Kosohuro Nagawawa, Nag Nakagawa, excuse me, um, Juju Tan, uh, Andrew Chung, uh, In Lak Sang, and Charlie Tree, is, uh, pres the President of the United States. Does that sound right. about right? It sounds right, yes. Okay. Now, I think you told me that the way nobody paid, uh, nobody was required to pay more than, than $12,500, but um, you, you had a hand in selected who, who got to sit with the President of the United States, which is a place of honor at this particular fundraiser, and it was based upon what their prominence or, or how much they had contributed in the past or how much you thought they could contribute to the President's events. And uh, also the, uh, the ethnicity of the, the, the person. Okay. Yeah. I, am, am I not in, am I correct in saying that of, of those 11 names, because the 12th seat, I guess, is was sort of reserved for the president himself, of those 11 names, five of them uh, could never contribute to the president's campaign because they were non-citizens? Oh, uh, they were the guests of the other contributors, probably, on that. But, but am I right about that, that Nina Wang, Ted Siong, 
Kwai Fai Lee, Pauline Kenchanilak, and uh, In Lap Seng are all non-citizens, and they're all seated at the President of the United States uh, table, and they can't make a contribution. I'll argue with some of them. Oh, well, tell yeah. me. I, I don't want incorrect information. On the Pauline situation, I was just, to my total surprise later on, I found out she was not. And because the, she has been with uh, this political fundraising matter for a long, long time, I was really surprised that she was not. Yeah. Well, as a matter of fact, at the time, I believe that Pauline Kanchanilak was uh, a managing trustee of the Democratic National Committee. Was, was she not? That's I mean, right. That's probably how you knew her. Right. Uh, she's a Thai citizen, a citizen of Thailand, and she is not a citizen, permanent resident, or green card holder at this time of the United States of America. Isn't that, isn't that right? Unfortunately, that's what I later on found out. Yes. Okay. So, so at the head table, at this event on February the 19th, out of 11 guests, five of them are not even eligible to make legal contributions to the campaign of the DNC or the President of the United States. That's, I'm right about that, right? Yes, correct. Okay. Then let's go back then uh, to that fundraiser, if I can, and I, I want to sort of pick up uh, where it is we left off yesterday. We were talking about Charlie Tree and Antonio Pan uh, and others. And um, did Charlie Tree request that certain people be permitted to sit at that head table? That's correct. And, and who did he ask? Sit I at think that uh, Mr. Ng. Mr. Ng? Uh, yeah, Mr. Uh, Ng, yes. Okay, who was his uh, business partner from Macau in the trading business that we were talking that about? That is yesterday. correct, yes. Did he make a request that any of the other four non-citizens that I just mentioned sit at the head table? Though the other four power was not related to him at the time, yeah. Okay. Now, Mr. Tree, at, at that fundraiser, he also made a contribution of 12500 did he not? $12,500. I, I believe so, yeah. And, and that uh, contribution has subsequently been termed to be not appropriate, illegal, and returned by the Democratic National Committee, is that right? Later on, I learned that, yes. Right. And, and if, if we could have exhibit number 317, his contribution uh, was on a check from Daihatsu International, which is the business that he... Uh, uh, shares with uh, Mr. Ng, is that right? That, that's correct, yes. And that check didn't come to the, even though we're talking about a fundraiser that's on February the 19th, 1996, that check is dated February the 29th, 1996. Is that not right? If, yes, on the check it is. Right. Okay. And, and do you know why? Is, is this money that he gave to you after the event? It is not unusual for people to give me money later, as long as they are very established as ongoing, you know, persons. Okay. Yeah. But, but do you have any specific recollection as to how this check came into your possession and then onto the DNC? Was this check given to you? I believe it came to me, but I don't remember exactly time when I received exactly from the check date, probably around that time, sir. Did Mr. Tree give you any indication when he gave you that check as to the origin of the funds used or that, that backed up this check? No. Do you know today, do you not, that those funds came from Mr. Ng, who was a, a non-citizen and hence unable to contribute uh, to a campaign in this country? Do you still, don't still I don't know. You don't know that. Right. Did Mr. Did Mr. Tree request that he be seated at the head table himself, aside from his request that Mr. Ng be seated at the head table? To me, Mr. Tree should have been, but Mr. Tree will make that room to Mr. Ng, okay. and he requested. Did you have any idea as to how many guests Mr. Tree invited uh, or, or brought uh, to the event on February the 19th? I have to give you the round up, uh, roughly number, maybe around between 15 to 20 or something like that. And, and all of them paying $12,500? May or may not. Okay. Yeah. I may or may not, may not I'm sorry. Mr. Wait. Chairman, uh, his time is about to expire, and I want to ask unanimous consent the gentleman be given a five additional minutes. Without objection, so order. I, I appreciate very much your courtesy, Mr. Waxman. I, I want to go through some of Mr. Tree's guests with you now, and, and I, I really appreciate Mr. Waxman's courtesy because it gives, lets me have a little continuity in talking about this subject so you're not, you sure. know, you, you get questions from all over, and then you've got to come back to me on this February the 19th business. I, I want to show you some photographs uh, now that are exhibits. The first one is uh, exhibit number 318, uh, and it's a, a photograph of an individual with the President of the United States and, and a gentleman by the name of Peter Chen. Do you know Mr. Chen? Yes, I do. Did you know, uh, and can you describe for the committee what the relationship, if any, is between Charlie Tree and, and Peter Chen? Uh, as Mr. Chen, I reported to you yesterday, Mr. Chen might have some uh, so-called brother-in-law brother situation with Mr. Tree. This is a person. 
Does Mr. Chen... Uh, I did not verify that, though. I'm sorry. That, does Mr. Chen, to your knowledge, or, or has Mr. Chen worked for the Lippo Group? He did. Uh, and do you know when? Uh, starting from... My best recollection, probably the early 80s. But Mr. Chen, to my information, owns a company called the Sun Union Group. Do you know that to be true? Do, do you know that? I vaguely remember there was some company like that, yes. Okay. Are there any ties between Sun Union and the Lippo Group, to your knowledge? I don't know. I, I, I don't know about that, yeah. Okay. And, and what contact, if any, are you aware between Mr. Chen and the Riotti family? Aside, he was, he was employed by Lippo Group before. Okay. And any connection other than being an employee of the Lippo Group? that you're aware of? I was aware of it later on. He left the Lippo Group, and but remained to be a partner uh, of, with, the, with the Riyadi family, especially uh, Mokhtar Riyadi in particularly. OK. Uh, next, I want to show you exhibit number 319, which is another photograph. And, and this to, to depicts, to my understanding, another one of Mr. Tree's guests, a fellow by the name of Santoso Guanara. Uh, are you familiar with this uh, individual? I'm not familiar with this individual. Okay. Another one of Mr. Tree's guests uh, at the event was Dr. Zhu Zhu Tan, uh, Zhu Jin Tan, excuse me, uh, which is exhibit number 320. Uh, are you familiar with Dr. Tan? I, I'm not. Okay. Dr. Tan, according from, to the, the records that we have reviewed from the February 19th uh, fundraising event, did not contribute to the event. Uh, are you aware as to how he came to be in attendance? He's as a guest uh, of Mr. Tree. Whatever the money Mr. Tree raised, the money he can designate the guests. Okay. And, he would and like to invite. Dr. Tan, I, I think, as I as I went through the list with you before of the head table, Dr. Tan was seated at the head table uh, at that event. Can you tell me, since you were in charge of arranging who was at the head table, how it is that? that Mr. Dr. Tan uh, became at the head table with the President of the United States? No, if he was, he probably was under recommendation by, by Mr. Tree. Okay. M many of, of Charlie Tree's guests, and, and we went over this list yesterday, uh, like Peter Chen, William Pei, uh, Santoso Guanara, uh, did not pay to attend. I mean, in other words, if you, if you match up who was there, uh, they were there, but there's no checks That's from them. Correct. Conversely, many people who gave to the event, Manlin Fong, Joseph Landon, uh, Zipping Wang uh, and others did not attend but contributed. Now, that's not unusual. I, I that think, is correct, sir. I, I think in the fundraising business, uh, as, as members of you know, politicians, we're always happy when people send in the checks but don't show because we don't have to pay for the hors d'oeuvres, that, that you know, they're not going to eat them at the event. But uh, did you ever become concerned, based upon this sort of uh, reverse scenario, that you had people at your fundraising event that you were in charge of uh, in attendance uh, that weren't contributing, uh, and, and were as invited guests, and then you had a large list of people that had paid but didn't show up. Did you ever become concerned? And again, uh, concerned because you're an individual who is knowledgeable about what a conduit contribution is. You, you know from the activities to which you pled guilty in 1992, 1993, uh, and other times that, that it, it is, one, it's illegal to, to give money that's not your money. Uh, it's illegal for a non-citizen to contribute. Did you ever become concerned that, that Mr. Tree's guests um, that Mr. Tree was using conduit contributions to pay for the attendance of, of all of these non-paying guests uh, at the uh, the fundraiser on, on the 19th. And just uh, while you're thinking about that, if we could put up exhibit number 323, which is a chart of the non-paying guests and non-attending contributors, just to refresh your, your memory. Congressman Latourette, uh I've been interviewed by so many people and over a period of time, so you know, that each time I gain certain knowledge about, you know, about certain things, the best I can I can think of right now at the time I was concentrating on raising money, you know, the guests being invited by people, and then I thought that was a general practice people were doing that. And I did not really pay attention to that. Okay. I, I, uh, and, and I remember in your opening statement you said that you were dedicated to the Democratic National Committee and you took that job seriously, and I know you did, you were very successful, but I, I, my specific question, and I guess you're, you're saying no, but I'd like you to say no, if, if that is your answer, that you were not concerned in 1996 that Charlie Tree was in using the same sort of scheme that you used in 1992 and 1993, that is, conduit contributions to get to the Democratic National Committee. Are, are you telling me you were not concerned about that? In that time, the things did not come to 
my mind, yes, sir. Okay. I, when I, I come back uh, the, the next round, I, I want to talk to you about specific guests that were at, of Mr. Trees, people that gave $12,500 to that event, but whose annual salaries were $20,000. And, and, and we'll just go through some of those. Because I, I, I think, again, as I was talking to you yesterday, I, it, it, it begins to stretch credulity that, that a clerk who works at, at the clerk of court's office in Maryland making $25,000 a year can give $12,500 to the Democratic National Committee uh, of their own money. A and for you to be familiar with the idea of conduit contributions as a, as a vice chair of the Democratic National Committee, to not have red flags going off or skyrockets or what, whatever the, the alarm bells would need to be uh, is, is unusual to me. And, and I hope we can talk about it and explain it. And again, Mr. Waxman, I thank you for your courtesy. Well, if the gentleman would permit, you are in the middle of asking questions. And I certainly have no objection if you want to continue uh, and have another five-minute round. If, if my colleagues on this side don't... Well, I'll ask unanimous consent, and if they object, they can object. But I'll ask unanimous consent that you be given five additional minutes to pursue questions. I, without objection, so ordered. I, I thank would, you very Would you much. yield to me just to ask a question uh, on Absolutely. this point? Absolutely. I'd be happy to. Uh, what I'm trying to understand, Mr. Wong, is that there was a dinner. People were sitting at the president's table who did not give money. The money was given by Mr. Tree, as far as you were concerned. Or uh, raised by Mr. Or raised by Mr. Tree. Was there any way you would have known that, that those people that were sitting there, you, you, you didn't care whether they gave the money or not. You, you, you knew that the money was paid for, the, uh, their attendance. That is right, yeah. The guest list of the Mr. Trees, uh, yeah. And would you be suspicious that there was a conduit contribution because they were sitting there? Not at that time, no. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Waxman. And I, I, I think that I, the only observation I would make is that that's pretty bad luck if you have a head table of 11 and half of them uh, are, are illegal uh, individuals in terms of giving contributions to the president's campaign. That's, that's 500. And well, the gentleman yield, they didn't absolutely. give contributions to the president's campaign. They were not legal residents or citizens, but that no one's claimed they gave a contribution to the President of the United States. Someone else gave a contribution who presumably was legal, legally able to give a contribution and, and invited these people to be, in effect, at his table, but the, his table turned out to be with the President of the United States. I, I, I appreciate that point, and I think we will find out that Pauline Kanchanlak, in fact, made substantial contributions to this period of time to the, to the DNC and the source of money from uh, Mr. Uh, Inglap Singh that Charlie Tree actually wrote on the 29th of February was Mr. Singh's money, but I, I appreciate that. Well, you, you, you may well be right, but the question is whether Mr. Wong what should, have been, should have been alert to that at that time. Right. Okay. I, I, I appreciate the distinction. I, I want to talk about two individuals who were at the event, guests of Mr. Tree, uh, and, and I, I think demonstrate that even if you were not aware as a vice chair of the Democratic National Committee in 1996 that conduit contributions were taking place at the fundraiser that you organized on February the 19th, that, that in fact this fact pattern does, I think, really, if, if, it's, if it's circumstantial, it's a, probably the best circumstantial evidence I could think of that it was going on. And, and I want to talk to you about a, a woman by the name of Lei Chu. Uh, do you know a woman by the name of Lei Chu? I do not know her. All right. Uh, as we reviewed the records from your fundraiser on the 19th, Lei Chu made a $12,500 contribution the day after the event. Uh, also, uh, bank records indicate that she deposited a check for $12,500 into a new account. The check was written uh, the day after the event to the, the DNC, was written on a starter check. Um, on the tracking form uh, that, that was submitted, Charlie Tree is listed as the solicitor and you are listed, listed as the DNC uh, contact. Now, did, again, does it concern you that an individual who is contributing $12,500 is doing so on a starter check? Does, does that raise any red flags uh, or, or concerns to you as a fundraiser for a major political party? It did not. It did not. Okay. Did, did you have the occasion to, to speak with Lei Chu either at this event or she also attended the breakfast with Vice President Gore the next morning? Um, did you talk to her at all? Have any recollection of talking to her? I don't have any recollection of talking to her. Okay. Um, did you ever have a conversation uh, with Charlie Tree uh, that would, uh, wherein he indicated that he had provided Lei Chu with the funds necessary to make the $12,500 contract? I did not either. Okay. 
Next, uh, and another individual who attended uh, uh, Keshi Zan uh, also was a, a, an attendant uh, and a, uh, a contributor of $12,500 dated the, f the 19th of February 1996. Uh, it lists you as the contact and no solicitor is mentioned on the, uh, on the reporting form. Do you know Keshi Zan? I met with her before, yes. Okay. And, and, and uh, would you have met with her about the time of this particular fundraiser? No. Uh, around that period of time, because she was also working for, for Mr. Charlie Tree. And, and did you uh, have any idea what it was that she did uh, employment-wise at that time? She had a job in some way in Virginia, but I did not ask her the, the detail what, as, as to what she was doing. Okay. Well, well in fact, uh, uh, Ms. Zahn had a job at the, as a clerk for the Arlington County uh, in Virginia, and it paid her less than $25,000 a year. Uh, again, as a, a, a fundraiser for the Democratic National Committee, would it surprise you, unless she had a, a trust fund or came from a very wealthy family, uh, wouldn't it, I guess, would that fact pattern surprise you that someone making less than $25,000 writes a check for $12,500 uh, to, to a major, I mean, unless she really loves the Democrats and is willing to give half of the money that she would make in a year to, to her cause. But it, don't you find that to be unusual? Uh, Congressman, I'm not trying to be argumentative. There are some, a lot of people, uh, peers don't have any money, but they have a lot of savings uh, in, the, in my community. So I, I did not really ask this question. <clears throat> uh, well, well, we know today what you may not have known in 1996, and that is on the same day that, that she contributed $12,500 to your fundraiser, she wrote a check to herself from Charlie Tree's bank account, reimbursing herself for the contribution. I, now, have you been told that today? Do you know that to be so today? I'm sorry, I was disturbed right now. That's okay. <clears throat> Congressman, I did not know that if was the case that was mis that was wrong to do that. Right. Well, I know. It, I know it's wrong. I'm asking you if you you say you didn't know it in, in February of '96. Right. Have, have you been told that since? I mean, or am I telling you that for the first time? Oh, I, I read from the news account to uh, okay. indicate that. Yes. And, and, and two others, uh, Manlin Fong and Joseph Landon, also wrote checks uh, at that event for twelve thousand five hundred dollars. And I, I would also ask you. We were talking about Antonio Pan yesterday. Uh, are you aware that shortly after their contributions, Antonio Fan, uh, Pan sent Fong and Landon cashier checks totaling $25,000 to reimburse them? Do you know that? I did not know that at that time, no. The fact of the matter is that all those facts, which I believe to be true, and I, and I understand you say you didn't know them in 1996, right. that's exactly the way that you used to raise money uh, illegally in 1992 and 1993. You, you, you see the problem, right? What, what um, I, uh, to the extent of the conduit money, that's, that's correct. But the process was, uh, was uh, not exactly the same on that, as you know very well, on the, you know what I'm trying to say. I, I do know what you're trying to say, and, I, and I'll come back and we'll talk some more later, and I, I thank everybody for their courtesy. Mr. Osi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I would like to yield my time to Mr. Souter. I thank the gentleman from California. I uh, appreciate that. Uh, good to see you again, Good Mr. morning. Long. We're going to... Uh, now, if I go back to some of the Mr. Uh, Hubble discussions that we had yesterday, and I wanted to um, uh, first review, uh, yesterday I asked you about a Little Rock visit and uh, where you had a, a car and you couldn't at that time uh, recollect why you were in Little Rock. You said that um, uh, you didn't have business interests there, personal or uh, family and probably weren't vacationing. And I wondered if overnight, I know it's a number of years ago, okay. whether you had a chance to review. Your I still could not. Recall, I went to Little Rock. I might have, all right. 
uh, from this ex uh, American Express charge records, there are two car registrations. I noticed right. that too. It, uh, the, the few possibilities there, since I could not really recall for sure, the family was there. The re James Reality, the whole family, including the children and I believe the maid. No, no wait. Yesterday when we talked, right. we have airline flight records showing that Mr. Riotti was in New Orleans, and you didn't think that he was in Little Rock. Uh, there was not a case was in New Orleans, sir. The uh, flight ticket on the bottom of yeah, the... Yeah, flight ticket on the date on the charges on June the 25th. So I believe this, uh, after they finished all the Washington events, they went to uh, Orlando, Orlando and New Orleans. So, so this is probably visiting Little Rock was prior to the visit of uh, Washington D.C. Okay, so let me see if I've I've got this straight because yesterday uh, I had asked you whether you were with Mr. Riotti in Little Rock, and you couldn't recall being in Little Rock, but your car registration showed that. But you didn't think Mr. Riotti is. Now today, Mr. Riotti and his family and or his family, mm -hmm. you believe were in Little Rock, and they could have used your credit card? Is that what you're saying? I, the credit card indicated I might have a, made a reservation for you and reserved the car for them. You know, if I were uh, in Little Rock, I, uh, on one of the cars I was using, you, there were two cars. One of the better cars was using for the family, the other one was used by me. So the, the uh, one car could have been used by you, you say? Yeah and one by the Riatis. By the Riatis. There was a better one, you, you can see it. The large charge bill is $223.65. That represents a longer period of time and also a, a better selection of a card that the other one was. Okay. Essentially, that was the basic I used uh, my credit card to make a reservation or travel arrangement for, for the family. And so, uh, as I understand what you're saying, the better car was for Mr. Riyadh and his family, most likely. I, I'm speculating on that. But speculating I don't know, on yeah. that. But it is your credit card. That was my credit card, yes. And, um, and the, there was a second car, and you're speculating that you were in the second car. If I... If, if I, if, if I if you were there. I was there. Because... Uh, Did you go to Little Rock often? In that year, I visit Little Rock every now and then, but it's not very often. A few times, I think, in the 1993 and 1994. I mean, a few times is two? Or oh, it's more than two, sir. Yeah. More than two? Yeah, three, five. Three, about three to five times, yes. Um, and, um, I mean, did you travel lots of other places, too, in your job? Um, Yes, some, some places, yes, I do. Well, let me, here's why I keep asking this question, because I have a series of questions to follow. This is a very critical time period right. and something that's been very um, uh, much examined around the United States, because yesterday, it, and you correct me if I, I misstate any of this, but I think what we established, that what you said was, is that you met Mr. Hubble at a reception in the spring. You didn't have the precise date. We no, I, I did say the inauguration okay. of 1993. Oh. In 1993, you, you met him at the That was park. the first I met him. First you met him. Right. But you saw him at a reception in the spring of uh, 94. That's correct. And he gave you a card. Right. And then on May 19th, which may or may not have um, uh, been approximately the time of the reception, but he called what we know from the records is he called Lippo Bank twice. Yesterday, you speculated that those two phone calls may have been about an appointment. No, the appointment. With appointment. Mr. Riotti. Right. Um, and uh, then on June 11th, Mr. Riotti comes to Washington. June 11th, he comes to Washington. With, that's when I ask you about the traveler's checks. He brought $32,000, including 17500 travel. When he came 
excuse me, to U.S. He came to the U.S. on June 11th. Okay. I, I'm not sure to Washington, though, June 11th. Yeah, uh, I take that back. Took, he came to the U.S. on June 11th. Um, that in the... Um, so he came to Washington, he came to the U.S. on June 11th. Then you also said during that time period you talked to Mr. Riotti about the uh, support, the help for a friend. And so we're in this period of time between where, where Mr. Hubbles called the Lippo Bank, you've received a card. You also said yesterday that you talked to Doug Buford, who, who uh, was with Bruce Lindsay's law firm, and he's former law firm, and he talked to you about the need for money for Mr. Hubble. That's where you first learned about the money. So we have you getting a card from Mr. Hubble, you talking to Mr. Buford. It's Buford conversation is first. The Buford conversation was first. You heard about, uh, I would ask. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, let me ask unanimous consent. Uh, I noticed that uh, uh, Mr. Shays had 15 minutes, Mr. La Tourette had 15 minutes, and uh, Mr. Souter had yielded five minutes of his time to Mr. Shays. I ask unanimous consent that Mr. Souter be given 10 additional minutes, so he'll also have 15 minutes. Without objection. Thank reclaiming, you, Mr. Chairman, reclaiming my time, I thank the gentleman from California. This is my yield to him, so. California is a great state. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> thank you. Um, that, uh, so you first you got a call from Doug Buford. Then you got a card from Webb Hubble. Then uh, Mr. Hubble called uh, to, to Lippo Bank, but as I understood you to say that, that while you thought it might have been an appointment, the appointment was going to be set up through you because generally speaking, Mr. Riotti didn't meet with Mr. Hubble except through you, to your knowledge. Right. Uh, that then you talked with Mr. Riotti about the money. Um, and all this was occurring in this period of time somewhere between May 19th, where we have the documented phone calls, and um, uh, the uh, and and where the money actually went was to June 24th. Now, in that period of time, it appears, at least from the credit cards, that you were in Little Rock uh, with the Riottis. At least there's two cars rented in Little Rock uh, yes, under I your name. Congressman, it is not, it was my duty to make travel arrangement, very frequently travel arrangement for Mr. Riotti or Mr. Riotti and his family. It, it's, it's been the, the practice for me anyway. As reflected by this, uh, this uh, American Express charge card slips on that. And uh, as I indicated to you, I do not recall at that time I was in Little Rock and by my half, uh, in this particular occasion. Um, I just, I, I have to say that even though it's a number of years ago, right. because of the nature of this controversy and the type of issues that we're dealing with, I find it extraordinary that you can't remember whether you were in, in Little Rock. Um, it, is, it is so uh, much a part uh, of what we're doing here because uh, you need to understand the gravity of this, that you also said yesterday, as I understood this, that uh, Mr. Riotti knew Mr. Hubble back way before they went to Washington because, uh, In is 80s. that because uh, Mr. Hubble did uh, work for the Riottis? At when he Either Riotti or the Wortham at that time. So he could have Mr. been Mr. Riotti had an interest, uh, the Lippo Group had an interest in the Wortham Bank during the, uh, the uh, mid 80s. And, um, that in itself is a sordid tale that most people will not under, understand. We don't have a chance to get into with the Worth and Bank, and, and it leads us into to Stevens and a number of, of other things. But you see what a tangled teb, web we weave here, mm -hmm. because one of the difficulties is, and, and there are many, many uh, millions of Americans who believe that silence was purchased, uh, and that um, when you see the tangled web of, of relationships, and uh, the types of discussions here, it's, it, it's disconcerting. But let me, let me move on, because if you don't remember, okay. uh, you, I'm not going to, by repeating the question, continue to 
to find that. So now uh, what we do, I think, uh, agree that, that by the time we get to the uh, 21st, right. you're both in Washington. Right. Uh, now, in, um, uh, on June 23rd, excuse me, I want to, I've got my, on June 20, uh, I asked you about the phone, phone log call on June 20th, Exhibit 97, yesterday, to Mark Middleton, and the meeting was, was set up, and we didn't establish where you were because you, could, you thought maybe the Hayes Adams, but you could have been in Little Rock. Now, on June 21st, the call schedule for Bruce Lindsay refers to, if you can look at Exhibit 98, if we could put that up, um, it refers to uh, a call schedule for Bruce Lindsay. Did you and Mr. Riotti meet with Mark Middleton on June 21st? I don't know exactly time we we did meet in in that week it was Mr. Middleton. Yeah. Do you know who was at that meeting? Do you know who, who was at the meeting with Mr. Middleton besides you and Mr. Riotti? The I do know in one occasion just uh, Mr. Riotti and myself and Mr. Middleton alone. I. Uh, and what would the purpose of that meeting have been? Because we are the acquaintances, uh, you know, just a, a friendly chat, and because Mr. Riotti has not seen Mr. Middleton for a while, it's just a it's more courtesy basis. Did, um, uh, what might you have chatted about? I mean, the weather, or? I really don't have any re recollection of the exactly accounts, um, Congressman. It's but since Mr. Riotti has just been asked to give a substantial contribution to Mr. Hubble by another longtime Arkansas uh, person, uh, and M Mark Middleton is a uh, longtime political director of this administration, also from, from Arkansas, you don't think it would have come up in the discussion about Webb Hubble? <laughs> The chronological things, uh, Mr. Souter, as you know very well, Mr. Buford was the first one. That was a quite a quite an early time on that basis, and uh, the visit with Middleton. I have no knowledge of what was uh, what was. I cannot remember what was talking about, but I do remember it was not. I he and I never talk about Mr. Hubble about uh, the issue in that. So your testimony was is that. To your knowledge, Mr. Uh, Middleton didn't know Webb Hubble needed help. To your knowledge. To my knowledge, what? In other who? words, you have not discussed with Mr. Middleton that Webb Hubble needed help. That is correct. And um, that uh, who suggested that Bruce Lindsay be called? That shows up in that document that you wanted to meet with Bruce Lindsay. I really don't know. I really don't know at this point. What's What's troubling about this is is that um, in that uh, memo or the White House notation, they'd like to you'd like to see uh, you're going to see Middleton. That you'd like to see Lindsay, uh, Doug Buford. You've testified as the person who uh, notified you that they needed help yesterday. You said that that help was basically not really a job. It was more out of friendship and the need that Mr. Hubble had. Um, that um, and that Doug Buford is a part is a senior partner in Bruce Lindsay's former law firm, which is named Lindsay. Um, do you think that Bruce Lindsay was aware that Mr. Riotti was going to give this hundred thousand dollar check to Mr. Hubble? I do not know. So, to your knowledge, you've never talked with 
you never talked with Bruce Lindsay about whether or not Mr. Riotti was going to aid Mr. Hubble? I did not, sir. No. Did Mr. Riotti ever say to you whether he had talked to Bruce Lindsay or to Mark Middleton about Mr. Hubble? <clears throat> no, he did not. Um, would it seem logical to you that Mr. Um, Riotti might have wanted to check out with some of the people he'd worked with in Arkansas uh, about whether to give the money to Mr. Hubble? The conversation never occurred on that on, in, in, your, in, the, in the line you suggested, sir. No. Um, exhibit 99, as well as um, Exhibit 100, show a series of meetings that I also want to ask you about. Um, that were you and Mr. Riotti visited different people from the administration. Um, did you uh, return to the White House on June 21st to attend a business leadership forum? To your recollection. I believe there was, uh, Congress saw that, I believe there were some functions in the White House at that, during that period of time. I believe we left and we went back to the, uh, to the function in the evening. Because if, uh, as you can see from this exhibit, there were a, a series of meetings that I want to ask you about. And um, in fact, uh, three, looks like three with Mr. Middleton. Um, and your testimony is that none of those meetings you talked about Webb Hubble? Not with me, no. Um, did uh, you discuss any of these meetings with... Um, uh, okay, I'm going to... My time's about to run out. I, I'm not going to uh, start uh, up on another round. I just find it very difficult because what we're going to see at the end of this is, is that Mr. Rowdy writes a check for $100,000. You've had a, a, a basically six visits to the White House in a period of four days um, when this is a, a pending matter. And uh, it's just hard to believe there was not a discussion about the uh, Hubble matter. You know, the matters, uh, during that week, we did meet, meet with Mr. Hubble himself. At least there was about two occasions we met with him. Uh, and also, some of the visits went in, I, I believe I took the reality's to wife and also children to visit, to tour the White House. Uh, maybe the name who cleared us in is Middleton, but actually it was probably Middleton was not involved. It could be someone else who was cleared us in. So we did visit White House quite a few times, but in my best recollection was I've never been, been aware of there's any issues related to Hubble that I was involved in, because we had a meeting with uh, Mr. Hubble personally already. Uh, one was in the hotel, one was in his office at that time. Okay, my, my follow-up questions are gonna relate to the meeting with Alexis Herman, the meeting with, the, um, with Webb Hubble, as well as some others, so. Okay, yes, thank you. Mr. Chairman, uh, I, I think I, it's my time now, uh, but uh, well, you did you have something you wanted to ask? Uh, I was going to, I thought Mr. Osi was going to be, so you're going to take your time now? I think Mr. Osi yielded and he'll be, uh, uh, I, I'd like to go over the chronology real quickly and follow up on what Mr. Uh, Sauter was talking about. May 19th, Hubble calls John Wong at Lippo Bank. 1994, that's at 1225. He called again a minute later at the Lippo Bank. May 23rd, Wong calls Doug Buford. Buford asked Wong to contribute to the Hubble Children's Education Trust Fund. That was for 7.03 in the morning. June 7th, 1994, at 4.17 p.m., 
Hubble calls John Wong at the Lippo Bank. June 19th through and Tuesday, June 20th, John Wong and James Riotti are in Little Rock. Monday, June 20th, John Wong calls Mark Middleton. He wants to arrange a meeting with Middleton for June 21st at 3 p.m. That's the time that's written in. Tuesday, June 21st, 3.17 p.m., Wong and Riotti call Bruce Lindsay at the White House and tell him they're meeting with Mark Middleton at 4.30 p.m. and ask if they could see him for a minute, either today or sometime this week. Lindsay claims he did not meet with Wong or Riotti, but nevertheless, that meeting was set up for 4.30 that day. 4.45 that day, Tuesday, June 21st, Wong and Riotti enter the White House for a meeting with Mark Middleton. 6.51, Wong, Riotti, and his wife Eileen enter the White House for a business leadership forum. That was later on, evidently he went back that day. June the 22nd, 12 o'clock noon, John Wong's expense sheet shows a lunch at the Mayflower for $61.69. 2.37 p.m., John Wong enters the White House for a meeting with Mark Middleton. 2.57, James Riotti enters the White House for a meeting with Mark Middleton. 6.30 p.m., the President Gala took place, and of course many of the people were there to visit, visit with uh, President Clinton. Thursday, June 23rd, Hubble has James Riotti on his schedule. That's two days later, or the next, uh, next day. 10, 10 a.m., Mark Grobmeyer enters the White House to see Alexis Herman. Wong and Riotti enter the White House at 10.26 to meet Alexis Herman. 10.32, Wong exits the White House, unknown when Riotti left. 11.05, call to the White House, Chief of Staff's office from James Riotti's room at the Hay Adams. 11.10, call to the Democrat Leadership Council from James Riotti's room at the Hay Adams. Noon, Hubble has... James Riotti, H. Adams, 12 o'clock on his schedule. 2 p.m., call to an unknown White House number from James Riotti's room at the Hay Adams. Friday, June 24th, Middleton's schedule reads, lunch with James Riotti, Eileen Riotti, and children. 12.05, John Wong enters the White House to see Middleton. This is on the 24th. John and Carolyn Riotti, James' children, enter the White House to see Middleton. James Riotti enters the White House to see Middleton. Call to Debbie Schoen at 211 at the OEOB from James Riotti's room at the Hay Adams. 216, call to unknown White House number from James Riotti's rooms at the Hay Adams. 5 o'clock, Hubble schedule says meet with James Riotti. 804, call to the residence of the Indonesian ambassador to the U.S. from James Riotti's room at the Hay Adams. 9.50, call to unknown White House number from James Riotti's room at the Hay Adams. 10.10, call to the residence of the Indonesian ambassador to the U.S. from James Riotti's room at the Hay Adams. Saturday, June 5th, John Wong's James and Eileen Riotti with the four children go to the White House for the president's radio address. And at 3.45, they checked out on June the 26th at 3.45 p.m. That's on Sunday. The next day... The next day, $99,985, $100,000 minus the $15 transfer fee from the Hong Kong Bank was sent to Webb Hubble. June 30th, Hubble calls the Lippo Bank in Los Angeles. Wong was in China. 317, he calls, same day. Wong was in China. July 5th, Wong enters the U.S. July 8th, Wong... Hubble calls Lippo Bank in Los Angeles. 2.20, Hubble calls Lippo Bank in Los Angeles. July 12th, Hubble calls Lippo Bank in Los Angeles. July 13th, Hubble calls the Lippo Bank, and at 2.23, he calls the Lippo Bank. When were you appointed to the Department of Commerce after that? Well, to refresh your memory, I think it was July the 18th. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. Yes, started, started to work. July So you were appointed by the President to the Commerce Department on July the 18th.
Monday. Is, right. I, I presume you're going to answer this question in a negative, but I'd like to ask you for the record. All of this took place between you and the Riottis and all these meetings at the White House with Middleton, and, and, and I don't know if you met with the President, but you were in the White House many, many times with the Riottis. Does any of that and the $100,000 contribution that Webb Hubble got from the Riottis have anything to do with you going over to the Commerce Department, being appointed by the President? No. I was appointed already. I had knowledge way of you know, at least a, a month or two ahead of time. That's nothing to do with this, uh, this, uh, this money thing it's with Mr. Hubble. So the $100,000 that was given by the Riottis just because they liked Mr. Hubble had nothing to do with all these meetings at the White House and your appointment not, over at the Congress? It's nothing to do with my appointment, no. Mr. Chairman, uh, I'd like Mr. to ask unanimous consent that you be given an additional 10 minutes so you can have as much time as each of the Republican members have had, which was a total Well, I appreciate that, each. Mr. Waxman, but I'm going to take a different line of questioning uh, at, at a subsequent time, so I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and yield to well, my colleague. May I ask, uh, maybe we can inquire, maybe Mr. Wong wants a short break. Yes, Mr. Mr. Wong, would you like a short break right now? And if so, uh, would you like to have uh, uh, included that at time to get a sandwich for lunch since it's almost noon? Better ask my counsel. I I normally don't take lunch, uh, Mr. Chair. <laughs> well, I'll let you ask your counsel if you guys like to take 30 minutes or 40 minutes. We can do that. Yeah, may I, Mr. Chairman, may I make a suggestion to the counsel? It's just so. Yeah, I I would certainly prefer that we just move on and let's get this questioning, uh, so that we can hopefully finish it at some reasonable point. But there's no guarantee that if we continue without lunch, that we will. Uh, finish the questioning. Cool. If, we, if we could have 10 minutes, a 10 minute break. 10 minutes would be fine. Is that, is that good with everybody else in the committee? If your stomach starts growling, holler, and we'll try to take Mr. a break Mr. along Chairman, the uh, Did you have a comment to, before we break, Mr. Wong? You, you, uh, Mr. Chairman, you just read of a, a list of the chronological events. Yes. Uh, there is, I just want to make sure that May 23, that event related to Mr. Uh, Buford's call, is, which is not related to Mr. Sauter's uh, uh, referring. There's no relations on that. On the May 23rd call that uh, Wong uh, called, uh, you called Doug Buford? I don't remember, don't recall, but I know for sure this thing is as, uh, as not related to what Mr. Sauda was talking about related to. Well, it says here that Bu Buford asked Wong to contribute to the Hubble's Children Education Fund at 7.03 that morning. Is that correct? I don't recall on that. Will the chairman yield? Uh, yes, I'll be happy to deal with my, my colleague. My understanding from the questioning is is that while our notes had suggested it was May 23rd, he suggested that date was earlier before the reception that he heard from Mr. Buford. Well, we'll double check our records right. on that. Yeah. Okay, we'll stand in recess uh, for 10, 15 minutes, and we'll be right back. Let's make it 15. 10, 15 minutes, we'll be back at 5 till 11. <laughs>